Winter is here, and you know what that means. Pain, suffering, and despair. Yeah, uh, snow sucks, and I hate it. Which is why I'm going to the one place where it can't find me. This is the best I could do. Released into arcades in 1981, Donkey Kong was Nintendo's first true smash hit video game, and would lead them to the place they are today. While the arcade classic itself would receive multiple sequels, the Super Nintendo would change things drastically. The Donkey Kong series became a platformer with Donkey Kong Country and its two sequels, developed by Rare. From there, the series grew with multiple entries on the Game Boy, and a remake on the Game Boy Color. However, after the series' big 3D debut with Donkey Kong 64, things got weird. Rare was acquired by Microsoft, leaving the franchise in a bit of a limbo. With its star developers gone, the direction for Donkey Kong was thrown off course. This resulted in a long gap between main entries, and in turn a lot of weird spin-off titles. Donkey Kong Jungle Beat and the Donkey Konga Trilogy were games using a special GameCube controller that mimicked bongos to play a platformer or a rhythm game respectively. Donkey Kong Barrel Blast was a racing game originally intended to use the bongos too, but development was shifted to the Wii before release. The Game Boy reimagining of the original arcade game got a sequel with Mario vs. Donkey Kong, and continued for a while afterwards. Eventually, the series would find a new home with Retro Studios, who would go on to develop Donkey Kong Country Returns and its sequel Tropical Freeze to fantastic success. However, in the midst of it all, a new developer would create a spin-off series of their own, one you might not have heard of, one that I only knew about because of the Wii U Virtual Console, and that I've never heard any discussion about. But before we go there, we have to go back to the beginning. We have to go back to Clue Clue Land. Released in 1985 in North America as a launch title for the NES, Clue Clue Land is a... Uh... Uh-huh. What? Uh, huh? What the hell is going on here? I need some help. Alright, I now know everything about Clue Clue Land. This is Bubbles the Balloonfish, and she is trying to retrieve the treasures of Clue Clue Land from the evil Unira sea urchins. In order to do so, she has to find all of these gold pieces, which are all laid out in patterns like a heart, some glasses, sleep paralysis, the start of a round of Minecraft Hunger Games, and, uh, uh, THAT! She also has to avoid these black holes, defeat the urchins, and collect various little power-ups. She does so by using her hand to grab these posts and spin around them. It feels like a mix of Pac-Man, Pictionary, and DK, King of Swords. They're not supposed to know about that yet! Oh, uh, right, uh... Come on guys, that's just plagiarism. I was not expecting this game to be so much fun. I enjoy a decent amount of arcade style games like it, but this is definitely one of my favorites. It's a shame it's a mortgage to own it physically, because I'd love to be able to pop it in and play whenever, but sticky notes will have to do for now. Nintendo isn't scared of Clue Clue Land, as it's been referenced in things such as Smash Brothers, but other than that, there's been no true sequel to the game, just re-releases. Or was there? In the same way Donkey Kong evolved into Super Mario Bros and Pac-Man evolved into, uh, Pac-Land, I guess? Clue Clue Land would also be turned into a platformer of sorts. That's right, DK King of Swing is the Pac-Land of Clue Clue Land! Released in 2005 for the Game Boy Advance, DK King of Swing is the fabled spiritual successor to Clue Clue Land. In the midst of the Jungle Jam tournament festivities, King K. Rule steals all of the medals that determine who's the hero of the jungle. Get them back. You do this by only using the L and R buttons to move. What? Yeah, so unlike Clue Clue Land, you don't use the D-pad to grab the pegs, you use L and R, which is an improvement, albeit still confusing. But you also use it to move left and right, attack basically all of the basic controls of the game. It's weird. Also unlike Clue Clue Land, grabbing onto pegs is more so throwing yourself upwards rather than just changing direction. And here lies the game's biggest flaw. This sucks. DK moves unbearably slow throughout these levels, making it feel less like controlling an ape, more so screaming at one. Why will you just do something? All your basic actions in the air are so sluggish that every little mistake or time taken to think feels like a punishment, and I didn't turn on my Wii U today to be scolded. Alright, so the controls don't feel good, but maybe there's something else redeeming here? 
Maybe? The levels are fine. It's nice how often new gimmicks and mechanics are introduced. There's like three different kinds of collectibles, which would be cool replay value if I liked this game. Bananas act as your coins, which you use both to heal and enter a super form, and this is not the best use of these two buttons, not gonna lie. You're forced to decide between spending these on higher jumps or just healing, and if you die and get sent back to the START OF THE LEVEL, you lose all of those bananas. Why? I ended up getting to the second world, got to this tornado level, and said, Nope, I'm done here. I've seen what I need to. There's a competitive mode based off of the events from the tournament, which is a neat idea, but they're locked behind adventure mode progression, so I can't really judge them for much. You can unlock bubbles as a 100% reward, which is really cool, but that requires beating the game twice, and there isn't enough banana radioactivity in the world to make me consider that. Well, that was an experience. This game is okay, and I think it had a good idea, but maybe the proverbial banana was still a bit too green. King of Swing was developed by Payon, a company that got the rights to work on the DK series right after Microsoft bought Rare. They would go on to develop Barrel Blast, and a sequel to King of Swing on the DS, which might just be a perfect fit. Can you imagine all the possibilities with the touchscreen? Two years after King of Swing, DK Jungle Climber released for the DS. The DK crew is on vacation on Sun Sun Island and see a big banana on a mountain. Go get it. You do this by only moving with the L and R buttons. What? And all you do on the touchscreen is activate a super form. What? Also at the top of the mountain is a banana spaceship. What? So you beat up this banana ship that's attacking you after the Kremlin gang stole the big banana. And when you beat up the ship, a talking alien banana comes out. How radioactive is this? So this is Xanadeb of Planet Plantain, <laughs> and he makes me question reality. It was his crystal banana the Kremlin gang took. Oh, and there was five of them. Go get in the back by traveling through wormholes to alternate dimensions. This plot is so outrageously silly that it kept me playing for much longer than King of Swing. I just had to know where we'd go to after the crystal maze and living with the let Wait a sec, DK, how are you rotating so fast? Oh. Oh my god. I KNEW YOU COULD DO IT! The feel of Jungle Climber is far better compared to King of Swing. DK walks, jumps, and rotates way faster. The powers with bananas are replaced with an invincibility power with a separate collectible and a dedicated attack button that is also a super fast jump. You can find Diddy and attack for a much greater distance. Dying sends you back to the start of the room, not the whole level. And you only have a life counter with Diddy working as a second hit point. There's tons of little quality of life tweaks that make it a joy to play, while still keeping all of the level mechanics from the previous game, and introducing new ones that are super unique, especially in the other dimension levels. On top of it all, this game looks good as well. King of Swing's graphics were fine, I am a sucker for GBA pixel art, but it is pretty generic, which is most noticeable in the pegs, which really don't fit. All of this has changed for the better in Jungle Climber, along with frequent art style shakeups in the wormholes. Why did I ever doubt you? Including a fun reference to the original peg designs. Also, look at these 3D models in the cutscenes. These are some of the smoothest I've ever seen on the DS. We did it! We actually found a good DK game today. It's clear that Payon and Nintendo SBD Group 4 Team 2. Payon put a lot of care into this game, and I thoroughly enjoyed my time with it. But the question still remains, what happened to these games, and why did they become so forgotten? Well, the roots of the issue might go back to even before the games came out. I can barely find commercials, print ads, or anything of the sort for North America, with Japan getting one commercial, albeit with variants, for each game, and Europe had it for a moment in a DS Lite commercial. I can find more reviews and trailers for the Virtual Console re-releases of the games. While we're at it, the games were received surprisingly well, honestly, with the biggest complaint seeming to be a lack of length and an awkward art style on the GBA, and slight repetitiveness on the DS. What it seems like to me was just timing. King of Swing released on the GBA just after the DS launched, competing with WarioWare, Yoshi, and a game I don't like. And on the GameCube, DK fans were getting Jungle Beat, a far more interesting game. A spiritual successor to an NES game that sold pretty poorly and was mostly forgotten lead to a GBA game that sold pretty poorly and was mostly forgotten. After that, bringing Jungle Climber to E3 2007 just wasn't enough. The virtual console releases of the game snuck in between a bunch of heavy-hitting titles, and the games faded into obscurity.
It's a shame that these games have become lost in the mix with all the other Donkey Kong spin-offs, but how much are we really missing out on? Are these games that need to be appreciated the world over? Is Nintendo missing out not having these on modern consoles? God, no.